So we've seen that if we know the force acting upon an object and how the object is displaced, we can then calculate the work done on that object using the work is equal to the integral of f dot ds. Now, if there's only conservative forces acting on a system and we're doing work on that object, that work is being stored as potential energy. So we've seen that the change in potential energy is equal to minus W, where W here is the work done by the system. So the change in potential energy delta U is equal to minus the integral of F dot ds. Now we can actually work back the opposite way as well. If we know about how the potential energy is changing, then we can work out the size of the force. So let's consider a small increment of that displacement. So just a little bit ds. So in that case, we can write this equation as well. du is equal to minus f dot ds. Now, this is a vector equation, but let's for a moment just suppose that this is just moving in one dimension. In that case, we can write du is equal to minus f of x dx. Now, of course, if it was moving in other dimensions as well, we just want to add those on. So we'd have an additional f of y dy and f of z dz with the negative sign. But in the case where it's just moving in the x direction, we can rearrange this and write, well, du dx is equal to minus f of x. And du dx, that's just the derivative of x. So this tells us how we can get the force acting upon the object in the x direction. If there was a force in the y direction, we could do the same thing. We'd have du dy is equal to minus f of y. And it's the same in the z direction. We'd have du dz is equal to minus fz. So by differentiating in the direction, we get the force which is acting upon the object in that direction. So this makes sense for larger movements as well because differentiating is the inverse of integrating. If we're going back in the opposite direction, we just need to differentiate that potential energy to get the force.